and welcome to everyone joining today's webinar on how to learn how an SAP audit analysis will simplify, accelerate, and innovate. Um, thank you so much for attending today's webinar. Uh, we're going to provide you with some examples and success stories of how SAP customers can audit their SAP system. I'm having some technical difficulties. Hold on just a moment. Sorry about that. Um, my name is Samantha, and I'm really happy to kick off today's webinar. My colleague, Heiko Hesht, will walk us through most of today's content. Um, but I'm going to start off by elaborating on some topics related to IBIS and the SAP audit analysis. Again, my name is Samantha. Um, I'm an account executive with IBIS America. I've been working with IBIS America for about three years now and in the business development and the sales area. And I'm really happy to be here today to help present today's webinar. Yeah, hello everyone. Um, this is Heiko. I'm um, one of the founding members of IBIS America here in the US. I'm uh, working in the SAP space since uh, 97. And I've been part of the original development team of RB Plus and SAP Solution Manager. Great. Thank you, Heiko. Uh, just a few housekeeping notes before we get started on um, looking at today's agenda. Uh, today's session is going to be recorded. The slides and the recording will be posted on our website. Since we do have a large crowd on the line today, everybody is going to be muted. Um, we do really want to encourage you to post your questions into the question box, and we're going to address them um, in the order that they're received. We're also going to make sure we've got about 10 to 15 minutes at the end of the webinar to answer your questions. So without further ado, let's take a look at our agenda for the day. We're going to start off with a few quick words around IBIS, um, increasing your ROI on your SAP investment, and then we'll also discuss what the results of an SAP audit analysis actually look like. We'll talk about the innovation of your SAP system, um, new and updated content from MIBIS, and then we'll go ahead and summarize the webinar and open it up for questions and answers. Please contact us uh, with questions during the webinar or after. We're always happy to help. Um, and don't forget to use the chat window box for questions and any open items. So to start off, um, just a few words about our company. Our parent organization was founded back in 1994 in Würzburg, Germany, um, which is only about 90 minutes away from SAP's headquarters in Waldorf. Uh, from the get-go, IBIS developed tools and methods which support SAP implementations. Professor Tomei, who is our founder, um, de actually developed the continuous system engineering approach back in 1996. And RBE Plus is one of the tools um, which support this approach. For those on the call who are unfamiliar with what RBE Plus or what RBE stands for, um, it's reverse business engineering. And the RBE Plus tool is used to analyze productive SAP systems. As you can see here, IBIS America is part of the Tomei Group. Our specific focus lies in helping customers to utilize their SAP systems most efficiently and effectively as possible. We are a research and development partner of SAP, Atos, HP, and PwC. And IBIS also developed the old original RBE tool back in 1998-1999. So speaking of PwC, they're actually using a new version of our RBE Plus tool from IBIS to do their financial audit. Quick little history lesson. Um, the word audit is derived from the Latin word audir, which means to hear. So during the medieval times, manual bookkeeping was extremely prevalent. Auditors in Britain used to hear the accounts read out to them, and they were able to check that the organization's personnel were not being negligent or fraudulent. So you'll find a lot of similarities within the audit process with the usage of the the IBIS RBE Plus tool. We try to gather 
as much information from your SAP system and your business as possible. We follow an extremely methodical approach in a project plan, and we run our analysis in an evaluation to then provide you with an as-is documentation and a potential future to be state of your SAP system. So some of the key points that we really want to hit on today is how is regular housekeeping paying off? Because it is. Um, how do you get out of a mess and stay out of it? You know, you don't want history to repeat itself. How do you keep up with SAP and your end users? And then um, assessing the innovation potential without starting a major project first. And then why is a tool-based, fact-based um, tool important? And how does it add value to your system? And with this, I will hand it over to Heiko. Heiko, it's all yours. Excellent. Super. Thank you very much, um, Samantha. So what does it mean to increase your return on investment or your productivity? Um, you know, maybe we can use SAP um, smarter. Maybe we can introduce uh, leaner processes, um, you know, having, uh, f you know, easier upgrades, uh, fewer incidents and tickets. Uh, we can focus on, uh, you know, higher user license effectivity, um, you know, better integrated processing with, with fewer manual interventions. Um, you know, back to standard, leverage, um, you know, more standard functionality, simplify the system, um, use best practices. Um, all of those um, items will improve the stability of your SAP platform um, and, you know, will increase the ability to adopt um, innovation when available. So I think that all makes sense. Uh, what's preventing you from achieving this? Um, you know, that's, that's something we want to take a look at and we will show some examples um, in the later part of this webinar. Yeah, I think I get it. So increase the ROI of your investment in SAP by increasing productivity. This is what's going to ultimately reduce your cost of doing business, correct? Exactly, yes. And um, Heiko, do we have some examples of how the regular housekeeping is actually paying off? And what's in it for me as a customer to do that extra maintenance? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we have an example here. Um, this is the result of a you know study conducted by SAP and Accenture um, some time ago. Um, they basically came to the conclusion that you can, in average, save 16% uh, of your total cost of in, um, ownership if you streamline your SAP system. Um, you know, if you think about um, that, uh, you know, the maintenance of your system, um, you know, probably is about 80%. Um, of um, you know the um, the cost you spend um, on on SAP, um, and you could save 20% of that, then you end uh, up you know with that 16% figure. And uh, you know below um, we have some some key statistics. When we analyze um, SAP systems, you know we find uh, lots of unused or obsolete you know custom enhancement like like custom programs and transactions. Um, you know, master data um, is not up to date, is not used. Um, authorizations and roles are obsolete. Organizational units uh, no not longer needed. Um, all that will help, you know, to reduce your TCO. Wow. You know, these examples look great. They're almost a little scary. Are these percentages real? Yeah, you know, unfortunately those numbers are real. Um, you know, we, um, we have some benchmark information, you know, maybe, you know, the average um, is a little bit lower than those numbers, but those are actual results from one of our customers. Wow. Um, so how would you be able to sell this to a CIO or CFO? So how have customers in the past positioned this initiative? Yeah, you know, basically what we can do with RBE or, you know, with the audit analysis, we can provide those hard facts. Um, um, you know, there are objective, um, there is no discussing, no negotiation, is it true or not, it's, um, you know, fact-based from your system, um, and there are, um, you know, values out there which are used by SAP and, and other implementation partners, you know, for example, um, you probably will spend, you know, um, a man day uh, per year on every transaction, um, you know, to maintain it, to upgrade it and whatnot. 
And if the transaction is really not needed and you have 700 transactions, that you know equals 500, 600, 700 uh, mandates, which you can easily reduce. Wow. And these p potential savings are confirmed, right? I mean, the, the percentages are not inflated at all. I mean, 90 percent, that's a lot. Yes, you know, it, it, it is a lot. And, um, you know, the, uh, the numbers um, are confirmed. Um, you know, as I said, we, um, you know, we have, um, you know, benchmark information. Um, we have success stories. Um, you know, and, and those success stories are not written by IBIS. Uh, you know, they are published by the SAP NetWeaver magazine, uh, for example. Um, we also are listed um, here in a Gartner study um, as the leading um, um, SAP assessment tool for the second time in, in, in a row. Um, so, I mean, those are facts and, um, you know, feedback from, from Gartner, from, uh, you know, our customers and whatnot. Okay. Um, can you possibly show some examples? Like, what does the RBE Plus tool look like? Um, what kind of deliverables should someone be able to expect from an RBE Plus analysis? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I can, you know, show um, some high-level um, statistics here. And, uh, you know, on, on the left side, we, we start uh, with cross-checks, for example. So those are high-level indicators where are potential you know, weaknesses in the current SAP usage, uh, what areas can we improve? I mean, we are talking about, you know, uh, process transparency, complexity reduction, you know, standardization, license management. So across the board, uh, we are coming up, you know, with those uh, um, statistics. Uh, we have the underlying, um, you know, data to prove it. And then we come up with a recommendation, you know, if something is a very high potential for that um, customer is it, uh, you know, a high potential or, you know, medium or, or significant potential? Uh, okay. We have all, you know, the underlying, um, you know, uh, details for it. Um, you see some of the deliverables here, um, you know, some, some technical results, uh, some process re related results, um, some strategic KPIs um, and so forth. Okay. Um, so could you give an overview of what's being audited exactly? So what different areas can be analyzed? And are all areas analyzed at once? Or can you kind of pick and choose what's most important to you to analyze? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, uh, we have a lot of, um, you know, technical um, results, uh, but we also have uh, process-related results. And you see the structure here a little bit on the left-hand side. Um, as you can see, you know, we cover different areas. And you don't have to focus on, on everything. It's it's kind of like, um, you know, having a library available to you. Um, you know, you might not be interested in everything in that library, um, and we don't expect you, you know, to read um, every single uh, chapter um, here in, in the uh, um, audit analysis either. So you can pick and choose and focus on, you know, what's really important uh, to you. Now, you know, as I've indicated, you know, we, uh, we cover, you know, some, some technical results. Um, we have uh, statistics about, you know, org units, master data, processes, uh, configuration. Um, and, um, you know, we, we take a look at all the rise of uh, available, rise of objects available in your system. Um, here's the example of the org units, how many, you know, company codes do exist, how many are used, um, you know, are they related to other organizational units? That's also an indicator of usage because you know, you, you might have a company code if it's not related, you know, to controlling area or plant or sales organization. Um, it's uh, it's not really used. Um, the, you know, those org units might be used the same way throughout the company. Um, they might be used differently. So there might be a harmonization of potential available. Um, those are all uh, things, you know, we, uh, we can find out. Okay. Um, so what is the time frame that we're looking at here? How far back in time can the analysis go? Well, you know, I mean, there are um, a few uh, pre prerequisites for RV+. Plus. Um, um, you know, obviously the table information needs to be available, but we also have, um, you know, log files we extract from the um, SAP system. And um, typically, we like to take a look at three months' worth, worth of data. Um, you know, ideally, we have 12 months or 13 months 
than we would cover a whole year. And um, you know, we have statistics which um, you know basically reflect reflect the, the, the as is when we extract the data. Um, typically, we have that three months or six months time window. Uh, we have 12 months uh, statistics for you know trends, um, for example, and then we have uh, checks you know which basically go all the way back um, you know uh, since you implemented um, the system. So if you want to analyze if something has ever been used, that is also a possibility. Mm. Now uh, the next example I have here is um, around. Um, um, you know, uh, configuration. So customizing usage um, here um, in the example of financial accounting, you know, we, we are at a low level here already. Uh, we see, you know, with those scorecards we use um, typically on, on a module header level. So who are the users? Um, you know, what are the processes? What's the configuration? Um, you know, do the customizing um, settings still apply? Um, to your current as is usage, um, you see some you know traffic lighting and alerting here as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a high number of com company codes not used. What does that mean exactly? Yeah, you know company codes not used, um, company codes with postings, and then uh, you know company codes uh, without activation. Um, yeah, it, it basically is an indicator you know of poor configuration. Um, you know, typically you should set the company code productive before you use it actively in the system. It it adds uh, you know an additional level of security um, to the company code that you cannot do data migration um, or delete um, you know any uh, productive um, data from the system. Wow, um, there's a lot of detail here, which is great. But is there more high level information available as well? Maybe like. Which processes are used? How intensively are they used? Things of that nature. Yes, um, you know we also have uh, you know some process flow diagrams, um, and um, we also provide then the drill down into the details. So you know this is um, an example in the, from the sales area. We are at a little bit of a higher level. It shows you the key you know features in the sales area. Are we using inquiries? Are we using quotations? Um, you know, we show also process variance in, in our statistics and uh, we can map um, those processes also to best practices or to, you know, for example, the business process repository um, from, from SAP Solution Manager, for example. Okay. Now on the, on the next level down uh, from the process flow, you will see the scorecards again, and you know they typically show you four or five, uh, you know, different dimensions. Um, and we try to capture the most important, you know, factors uh, in your SAP environment. Uh, you know, the people or users, the processes, you know, the data, some efficiency um, criteria, and then we use, um, you know, traffic lightning, uh, mouse over information, and uh, um, you know, threshold values to highlight the most important factors. To you. Okay, so what makes this tool slash analysis different than if I were to develop my own report using SAP data? Well, you know, you, it, it basically would mean, you know, you would try to reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, IBIS uh, is providing the tool um, for a very long time. We started 98, 99, so, you know, we inv invested really many um, years into the development of the RBE Plus um, tool. Um, and um, I mean, you know, this is our bread and butter, really. You know, this is what we do for a living. Um, we, we, we do a lot of projects. We have verified standard content. We provide, you know, benchmark information, best practices. Um, you know, you see those uh, alert, alerts here. We have threshold values. So that's all information which you know isn't inside your SAP system. You know that's where the expertise from IBIS uh, um, you know really pays off. And um, you know we we saw you know um, the definition of audit. Um, you know IBIS is really that independent party. You know uh, taking a look uh, from the outside onto your system, and that outside view on on your internal SAP usage uh, really you know makes a lot of sense.
we uh, you know we cover a lot of different areas um, you know SAP um, you know standard modules we can um, um, you know and analyze industry solutions the the look and feel um, between the different areas is is pretty much the same um, of course you know there are different details like here in materials planning from from sales and distribution uh, but the dimensions typically st stay the same. Uh, we, we talk about master data um, as well. Um, you know, as I said, industry solutions. Um, you know, for you know utilities, retail. Um, um, you know, apparel and footwear. We we have, um, have content there, and um, we update and develop that content. Um, you know, on a continuous basis. So. You know, I, I think it makes a lot of sense to run that SAP audit uh, on a continuous basis. Um, you know, for some customers, uh, you know, maybe, you know, a, a yearly event. Um, and, um, you know, you can also compare different systems um, or different um, snapshots in time with the tool and then, uh, you know, keep track of the progress of your SAP innovation project. So does this audit analysis provide more value to IT or the business, or would you consider it to be of equal value? Ooh, you know, it, that is a tough uh, question. Um, you know, is it, is it you know, equal value for both um, areas? Um, honestly, you know, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't know if it's exactly 50-50, um, you know, but definitely, you know, we have a lot of, uh, IT-centric um, and IT-driven results in the RBE um, tool. Um, but, you know, I mean, in the end, the business needs to make the money, you know, to fund our SAP implementation, um, you know, and the IT department. And, um, you know, we, we try to keep the, the cost down to run uh, your SAP system. Um, here in this example, you see also, you know, uh, business-related key figures um, available in RB+. And, um, you know, that, that cash discount ratio here, for example, that should be very, very relevant for AP, uh, definitely something the finance department uh, should take a look at. So, you know, maybe it's a 60-40 split, 60 IT, 40 uh, business. Um, and, um, you know, we, we can take a look at uh, many different efficiency indicators um, in the system. And uh, a lot of them are definitely relevant, uh, you know, for business. And, um, you know, the, the good news here is um, with RBE, we really support um, that organizational change management process very well. We have the user information, we have the details of the business processes, and, um, you know, we also support um, solution manager, for example. So if, um, if somebody is interested in business process monitoring, uh, we can highlight, um, you know, certain um, areas here. Um, you know, areas which we want to monitor on a regular basis, and we can also um, uncover training needs. So that is, you know, more uh, the process-related content. If we go back, um, you know, to the more technical content, um, then uh, here, you know, we analyze, uh, you know, some risk factors um, in your system. Um, in this case, there are many users with, who are using system transactions. Um, there are you know, a few users who are using data browser transactions. We have obsolete transactions, which are no longer really supported uh, by SAP or where there are, you know, um, better and, and newer transactions available. So, you know, if, if there are many users using those uh, system transactions, they are, you know, pretty cri uh, critical and, you know, they affect the entire system. So, you know, we should make sure that only a few hand-picked uh, users um, should have the authorization um, to, to run those um, system transactions. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this content looks very ERP-centric. Um, is there also some content from HANA or S4 HANA? Yeah, yeah you know, everybody's talking about um, HANA. Um, you know, maybe, maybe more than we want to hear about um, it um, at this point, but uh, you know, HANA um, really offers also many new um, features and, and options to IBIS. Uh, we are actually using HANA um, for our, um, you know, RBE analysis in, in different ways. And we also have uh, content specifically for S4HANA. 
if uh, you know people are interested in uh, um, you know upgrading to S4 HANA and, and want to see you know how, how what the impact would be. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's absolutely you know a really exciting area, and uh, what you see on this screen here is that uh, you know we we are working on uh, you know new web-based applications. Um, and uh, you know we extract some data, put it in a HANA database. Uh, we have a HANA web a cloud application, um, and this specific application then um, you know analyzes performance issues, um, you know areas where HANA would really add a lot of value um, to your organization. Um, we can identify the areas where there would be a lot of improvements, and we can also showcase how HANA would look like. Um, in your specific um, scenario. Mm. So is this some kind of sales tool from SAP? I mean, is every result going to be, you know, you need to invest in HANA? <laughs> no, you know, I mean, the, the, the result is not predetermined. Um, you know, we are really trying to be that independent partner taking a look at, uh, you know, the outcome. And, uh, you know, the outcome could be, hey, HANA makes a lot of sense for you. Um, you have so many users affected, you know, with performance issues. Um, you know, and there are many, there's many new content available for you. Uh, but the result could also be, well, you know, I mean, HANA certainly uh, would improve, uh, you know, some um, things. But, um, you know, maybe you should take a look at your custom code first, uh, you know, before you upgrade to HANA because it's really the custom code. In your system, which slows down, um, you know, the performance. So, hey, everybody wants to, or needs to make a living. Um, we don't sell HANA. We don't sell, um, you know, databases. Um, our core expertise is really analyzing um, those systems objectively. Okay. So, you know, we um, what we really want to do is um, in, in this particular um, case. Um, identify if it makes sense to move forward to HANA and in which areas it makes uh, the most sense. And that analysis we provide can also help um, you know, building a business case uh, for HANA. Um, you know, we provide the details to, to prepare the system for HANA and then also build a project plan. So you know, if, if your CFO or CIO says, well, you know, I'm, I'm happy with uh, business suite um, or ERP, um, we don't have too many issues. You know, we might find, you know, some issues uh, which uh, you know, could make him rethink his um, assessment, or maybe, you know, we improve what we have and, and actually use what we have. Mm -hmm. So is this HANA innovation analysis, is it similar to the business scenario recommendation tool that SAP provides? Um, you know, on, on first glance, there might be some similarities with uh, the, the BSR, the Business Scenario Recommendation Tool uh, from SAP. Um, but, you know, we, we go um, a lot deeper in our analysis. Uh, you know, we start off with uh, gathering strategic goals. Uh, we, we capture them in a methodical way. And then, um, based on the current SAP usage, uh, we evaluate the relevance of the, um, you know, HANA or S4 HANA content and the impact um, on your organization. So the, the approach is really different. Um, you know, we have um, a lot of more details. Um, you know, we, we, we also analyze, you know, transaction and program usage, but then we add uh, the user information to it. Uh, we extract the uh, details as a table information. Um, and then, you know, identify uh, suitable as for HANA content, you know, like those Fiori apps and, and HANA live views um, for you. Mm. So, yeah, you know, that sounds great. Um, but what does it really mean specifically? Yeah, you know, basically, you know, what we try to do is um, a tool-based recommendation, um, you know, uh, based on, on, on the HANA content. So, for example, um, you know, you could use a specific SAP standard transactions uh, transaction in your system. Let's say VA01 create sales order, and um, you know that um, transaction usage uh, could indicate that you should use, uh, you know, the, the new HANA functionality, the Fiori app for create sales order creation, and um, it makes really a lot of difference, you know, whether that transaction is used by one user, by an intern 
by a consultant, by a developer, or 3,000 business users. Um, so it is very important, you know, to know who are the users who are using those transactions, um, and then um, you know that information will help you to gain support uh, for your HANA initiative. It will support you know that organizational change management process. You can provide sufficient training and education to those folks. Um, and again, you know um, the business case will look a lot different. You know whether um, you know that transaction is used by 10 or by a thousand uh, users. Um, if you can improve you know that process, simplify it, um, make it more performant, um, that has a bigger impact. Now, in, in addition to that. Um, you know, I, I think all experts agree, you know, before you move to HANA, um, you know, you should, um, you know, clean up your SAP system. You know, there, there is that saying, time is money. Um, and, um, you know, if, if you can improve the performance of your system, that can actually mean, you know, uh, you know, better productivity, saving some money um, in certain areas. Um, on, you know, on the flip side, um, memory costs a lot in the HANA world. Um, so, you know, we take a look at archiving potentials in ERP, we point those out in detail, and then um, here in the BW space, um, you know, we, we, we talk about a, a back to ERP um, a concept. Um, so, you know, for example, uh, we analyze um, the usage um, in the BW system. So, you know, maybe you can do some archiving, maybe you don't need um, all um, areas of BW. Um, in HANA, maybe they are currently not really used, maybe they are not really intensively used, and then um, you know we also analyze how large those um, info providers are, and how many source systems are utilized. Mm -hmm. So, um, just to clarify, what do you mean by the back to ERP? Yeah, very good question. Uh, you know, back uh, to ERP, that's actually yeah. Um, a scenario we, we really stumbled into uh, three, four years ago. Uh, you know, HANA was very new. Um, you know, we didn't know as much as we know now about it. And um, you know, when we analyzed uh, one of our first customers um, in regard to HANA, um, you know, basically, you know, he, the, the CIO told us that uh, you know he, he can make a business case for ERP on HANA if he can reduce. His BW footprint. So you know that's uh, that's basically the fundamental concept uh, behind that back to ERP. Um, instead of you know um, using BW, maybe utilize uh, you know the uh, yeah analytical options in uh, HANA uh, for the business suite. And it's 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 a it's kind of a funny story behind that back uh, to ERP because um, I implemented BW for that customer back in 2001 and 2002. And in hindsight, you know, the results are not really that surprising because we implemented BW because uh, uh, actually we started in the HR area and, um, you know, HR reporting, standard reporting is really weak. It's not end user friendly. Um, so we started with HR, you know, then SD followed. We were looking for more advanced reporting um, options in the sales area. So they wanted to enhance, uh, you know, their R3 reporting. And they didn't really have, uh, you know, too many uh, third-party tools or non-SAP systems, um, you know, which needed to be analyzed. So, have you seen SAP customers in the past just completely shutting down BW because of S4 HANA? Well, you know, I mean, uh, completely shutting down um, BW might not be an um, option for every SAP customer. Um, you know, typically customers still need uh, BW, you know, if they have uh, legacy data, third party tools, maybe, you know, they want to aggregate, um, you know, the information, keep some historic information in BW, or, or they utilize uh, business planning and uh, consolidation, BPC. But, you know, um, you know, if, if you can reduce your BW footprint because some areas are really not used at this point, um, you know, here we have an example of, uh, you know, cutting down uh, your footprint uh, by 42%. That really uh, makes a, a lot of uh, difference. Um, and, you know, one, one result could also be, hey, you know, we have the content available. 
uh, dear end user, you know, why don't you use it? So, you know, if back to ERP is not an option, you, you still can reduce the BW footprint, maybe not eliminate it completely, um, but, uh, you know, significantly reduce it. Okay. So, say for an example, you know, there's a company running ECC 6.0, Enhancement Pack 7, and past couple of years, they've primarily only gone through technical upgrades. How would an SAP audit analysis help them in that situation? Yeah, you know, I think that that scenario actually is not really uh, too uncommon. Um, you know, we, we, we see a lot of um, customers out there. Um, they are on ECC 6.0, Enhancement Pack 6 or 7, um, pretty much up to date. But, um, you know, basically what they did in the last couple of years, uh, you know, they did one technical upgrade after the other. Um, so they are on ECC 6.0, but maybe, you know, they're probably still using 4.0b functionality uh, in the processes uh, for all that matters. Um, so, you know, the, the HANA innovation analysis is, uh, you know, definitely an area, um, you know, we, we can uh, support a customer with. But, um, you know, we also, um, you know, take a look at, uh, you know, the old business suite. So, yeah, HANA is a, is a great new technology, um, you know, not only new technology, but, but offers also new functionality and, you know, supports new, new business cases and business models. Um, but we are also addressing, you know, the, the old business suite uh, world. And uh, we follow a similar approach uh, like we do in the HANA uh, example. So with, with the detailed SAP audit, we, we um, have that, um, you know, detailed uh, current as is situation with usage information, um, you know, all the alerting, you know, the, the threshold values and whatnot. And then, um, you know, we, we assess and collect and document the strategic goals and then provide a very detailed recommendation of what functionality uh, should be leveraged and why. So in the innovation recommendation um, space, um, here's an example uh, for CRM. And, um, you know, we, we classify the different innovation packages um, in top recommended, strongly recommended, and so forth. Um, and uh, we, we provide the information where that classification is based on. And then, um, you know, we have the current system usage, the strategic goals, and then we come up with a recommendation. Um, on, on the, you know, bottom right of that screen, um, you, you will see the detailed usage information which led um, to that classification. We provide uh, prerequisites, um, you know, maybe um, if you need some new licenses, and we also provide a release note. Okay, um, so this is all kind of coming back to me. I think I have seen these slides and results um, a few years back, um, but does it really make sense to analyze the SAP system again? I mean, what's really changed uh, from two years ago? Yeah, you know, we uh, we started with that innovation recommendation, you know, uh, quite some time back, you know, I think release, upgrade potential, we called it back in the day. Um, and, you know, typically our recommendation is that um, every customer should run an SAP audit, you know, every one or two to two years if there are no major changes in the uh, IT or on the, on the business side. Um, the results can really be used for many different projects. Um, a lot of customers are using the results to prepare and support mergers and acquisitions, you know, upgrades um, and, and the GRC projects, carve-outs or spin-offs. So if, if any of those projects occurs within the, you know, one or two year time frame, it's probably you know a very good idea to to run that analysis again, and then you know obviously it depends uh, when you saw the the last analysis results. Um, we we made really a lot of uh, improvements and and added new content, and you know I know there are you know some of our existing uh, customers uh, on the webinar. Uh, you know we we get uh, very good and very detailed feedback. Um, you know we we uh, implemented a lot of. Um, um, improvements and changes in the extraction process, um, you know, running those ABAPs in background, um, selecting the right parameters. We are providing configuration files. Um, you know, you can select, um, you know, what you extract, um, you know, and, and it's, it's a lot easier. You don't need to, 
you know, re-implement other programs, um, you know, with, with changes, we, we can really do it on the fly. Now, besides uh, the technical, um, you know, improvements, um, you know, we, we have uh, this new Fiori-like um, app design. That's something, you know, we uh, we include now in, in our front end. Um, here we have the example of the, uh, you know, system overview. Um, you know, very high level information, you know, what operating system is um, SAP running on, uh, what's the underlying database, um, how many active modules, uh, number of active users. Um, we have um, all the details, um, you know, for um, uh, those uh, KPIs. And, um, you know, every time you see that little triangle here, um, there's mouse over information. Um, and um, it lets you drill down into the details. We are also working on a web-based browser, which should come short, uh, out shortly. Uh, that should be also very exciting. And as you have seen, you know, we, we also um, use um, HANA technology uh, for presenting the information. Now, you know, we also added, um, you know, some content, uh, you know, for you know, maybe the basis department for system integrators or, or hosting partners. Uh, here's an example uh, which shows, um, you know, the peak hours for dialogue and background um, jobs or users. So, you know, when, when would be a good, um, you know, window for maintenance, for example. Hey, Heiko, is there a legend on how to read and interpret these tables? So I'm assuming the lighter, darker the colors are correlates with the amount of activity going on? Is that correct? Yeah. Exactly, yes. Um, you know, in, in, in the real tool, there would be the legend. I, I, you know, those are some screen prints, and I cut them a little bit short. Um, so the legend is available. And uh, I mean, I don't really know, you know, from, from which customer that is. But, you know, it, hmm, it might be, you know, a customer uh, prob you know, maybe, you know, if, if that's uh, central time, maybe he's on the East Coast. Because it looks like you know people start working at six o'clock, lunch break is uh, you know between eleven and twelve as it looks like. So the darker the color, you know, the more activity on the system, and um, you know uh, people then go home around about five-ish or so. So that gives you a nice overview, you know, when is uh, you know a lot going on on the system. Now we have also you know more process related information in here. Um, here is, um, you know, an overview um, of um, uh, finance, logistics, and HR, um, number of active users, uh, the percentage of the um, SAP standard um, usage. Um, we have a number of master data elements available, um, you know, the org units, uh, for example. Um, so that's you know, the high-level information uh, for the more functional areas, and then you can drill down into the details as well. Now, we have seen those process flow uh, diagrams before. You know, they, they, uh, we, we also change them a little bit from a front-end perspective, um, and then, you know, you see the, uh, you know, the real process in your system. Uh, we show the you know number of uh, you know documents for example so that's the document header information and then uh, the line items per month in average and then you can drill down into the details or in this high level um, overview you see also the process variance towards the bottom of that um, screen print yeah here you know the, the example with the organizational uh, units we already talked a little bit about it, um, you know, so how many org units exist, how many are used, how many relations uh, do they have, and then are they used the same or heterogeneously uh, throughout the company. So can this analysis provide plant level information? For example, um, purchase document types used on plant level? Yes, that is possible. Um, we, uh, you know, we can drill down to those details, uh, and we do um, so actually in, in the trend and usage profile, you know, where we analyze uh, a 12-month uh, window, um, you know, which document type, which, um, you know, procurement type was used in the different org units. Can you also drill down to a user transaction level as well? 
yes, that is also possible. Um, you know, we uh, we can group uh, the users by regions or org units um, if there is no overlapping assignment uh, between um, those units. And uh, we can also show, you know, the configuration used by a user. So, you know, how many sales documents did a user create in which sales organization and what um, sales document type did he use for that. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, so can this information also be used for compliance and licensing assignments? Yes, um, that is, um, that is um, um, something we do um, in, in our compliance uh, section. Um, um, so, you know, um, are you over licensed, under licensed, uh, do you have too many authorizations and whatnot? And um, those details also can be used um, to create and validate uh, test scripts um, and, and test plans. So, you know, you only need to test um, the combination of the use configuration um, in the org units, which are really used. And uh, you also get a list of power users. And um, you know, those power users create the most documents in a specific area. And they are probably the best source when it comes to talk about, you know, testing or, you know, change in functionality. Now, another a good example, um, about configuration um, is displayed on, on this slide here in the finance area. Um, so very nice overview. What's the configuration in those um, areas? Um, what's the standard configuration? How many custom objects do we have? Um, and then um, the percentage of the usage of the standard and custom uh, configuration. And then last but not least, um, here an example around master data in the new um, display. So, you know, how many GL accounts do we have on company code con, uh, level, on client level? Uh, how many are blocked? How many are marked for deletion? How many are never used? Um, all those examples help you to, to assess your system usage and then, you know, help you to clean up and, and document your system usage. Okay. Wow, you know, I think we've definitely covered a ton of content today. Um, I think a quick summary is in order. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, uh, you know, we, we sometimes get carried away with, with all the content we can provide. Um, um, the, the tool can really be used, you know, in many different um, scenarios. So, yeah, let, let's summarize it. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I put a lot of, um, some of the key facts on this slide. Um, I really think, uh, you know, as we discussed, an audit um, of your SAP system makes a lot of sense. And uh, there's really a lot to gain from it. Um, you know, we as IBIS, we, we really provide uh, the most complete and comprehensive SAP system assessment, and we provide objective facts. And, uh, you know, our recommendations are no assumptions or opinions. It's, it's really fact and system-based. Yeah, I think we can also add a few more items. Um, like evaluation of used and not used processes, evaluation of the intensity of the usage and the usage variety of the transactions, evaluation of the degree of individualization, um, including benchmarking, evaluation of customizing settings, um, obviously according to operational needs, and an efficient detailed comparison of clients and organizational units. Absolutely. Um, you know, we, 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 we discussed some of those examples, you know, and uh, we probably could continue for hours. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, we, we, we still have 10 minutes to go. Um, you know, we, we want to wrap it up. Um, you know, from my side, uh, please uh, pencil us in, you know, if you're attending Sapphire, stop by at our booth. Um, you know, you can ask some questions. We, we can show you specific areas. Um, so, you know, really looking forward to see you at, at Sapphire. Yeah, we're really excited for Sapphire this year. Um, we've, we're also going to be doing a customer-led session, um, and we're really excited that Medtronic is going to share their ALM roadmap to enable greater end-to-end -end operational excellence. So that's going to be on Thursday the 19th, as you can see. And then you'll find all of our contact information on this slide. Um, if you have any questions and you haven't put them into the chat window, please feel free to do that now. Um, 
we'll take a couple minutes and see if we've got some additional questions that we can answer. Perfect. Um, so I have one uh, question here. Does this extend to industry solutions, AFS, for example? Yeah, um, you know, we, we cover um, quite a few of those industry solutions in standard. Um, we have, um, you know, content for AFS as well, apparel footwear. Um, and, um, you know, if, uh, if there is, um, you know, if there are industry solutions, and there are industry solutions, you know, which we don't cover, um, we can also develop, um, you know, some content. Um, it's it's really a question, you know, on on how how often it's it's requested. Um, you know, we we are partner of SAP. Uh, we developed a lot of content in the last couple of years, and um, you know, apparel and footwear um, is definitely something we we have uh, dealt with before. Okay. Um, other questions. Um, Samantha, can you see that uh, that question box in your front end? Uh, yeah, um, I've, I've got one. So how does the SAP audit analysis impact um, the SAP system and what resources need to be involved and is there a performance impact? Okay, um, I think I will start at the end. Performance impact, no, there is no performance impact. Um, you know, we, we can run that audit in the background, in, in a background shop. Um, um, it, it, there is no performance impact. Um, we've never seen that um, in, in, you know, in the last you know, 10, 10 years or so. Um, what resources uh, need to be involved? You know, there, there is really not, um, a, a, you know, high demand or a big impact on your organization. Um, you know, the, the audit uh, programs need to run, they collect some data, so we need a technical person, you know, maybe a, a basis or an admin person uh, who runs uh, those extractions. Um, and then, uh, you know, we provide a result, and then we would like to, uh, you know, share the results with you or, you know, your partner, your system integrator. Um, and um, you know, hand the results over. So you know, impact is is minimal really. Um, you know, depending on what we're looking at, you know, we might need half a day a day, uh, you know, from the different areas. So let's say maybe four hours from finance, maybe four hours from sales, uh, the different modules. That's really all we need. We've got another question as well. Um, are there any prerequisites to run the audit analysis and um, does UPL need to be turned on? Um, there are not that many. Um, huh, interesting. There are not that many um, prerequisites, you know, to run an run an audit analysis. Uh, uh, one of them is uh, that a transaction monitor should be turned on, so we can capture that information. Um, and SAP standard setting, I think, is two months. If if you want more, you know, then then that. Um, a log file or that STO3 and setting needs to be changed. Um, there's no performance impact in that. You know, it, it, it writes a larger file. Uh, obviously, you know, the more information you collect, um, the, that person who runs uh, those programs need to have the right authorization to extract the information. And we typically run that extraction in your productive system. But as I said, you know, there's no performance impact. UPL, um, usage procedure logging. Um, now that's not um, something um, you know we require typically. Um, and now usage procedure logging is uh, is very helpful. You know when it comes to SAP Solution Manager, for example, um, in the ERP space, um, it's not really needed. We, we you know we if you have it on, you know we, we happily take that information, but it's not a, a prerequisite. Um, if you're talking about, you know, um, CRM or SRM or, or other web-based applications, then I think UPL would be, um, you know, pretty important, you know, so we can capture, you know, um, you know, all all the details from those systems. Okay. Um, we've got three minutes left. We got two questions. Um, so, what projects will the audit analysis help with? Well. You know, um, there, there, we, we are having a lot of discussions, you know, with our partners and with SAP 
um, you know, a, a lot of uh, folks are talking about back to back to standard, you know, about HANA. So, you know, HANA, S4 HANA, innovation, um, digital transformation, those are definitely areas we can help. Simplifications, um, you know, system mergers and, and uh, you know, consolidations, upgrade preparation. We have the integration into um, SAP Solution Manager. Um, so impact analysis, uh, business process monitoring. Um, a lot of our users are using the results, you know, for GRC um, slash compliance um, um, analytics, you know, potential license savings, um, harmonizations. I think those are probably the most uh, common projects uh, we do. And um, last but not least, how does this analysis reduce testing? Um, well, you know, I think um, I, I can give a, a twofold answer there. Uh, we can integrate our results into SAP Solution Manager, um, and that's that's really a starting point, you know, to uh, to document your solution, um, to set up impact analysis. Um, so basically, you only want to test uh, what's what's really used, um, and then um, you know what's uh, what's impacted by a change. Um, you know, we've talked about you know, the detailed information around users, uh, what are they doing in the system, what transactions are they executing, what documents are they posting, what configuration are they using. So it is really a great starting point, um, you know, to, to come up with some test scripts. It, it helps with prioritization, you know, points out um, power users and, and heavily used areas. Um, that all helps, you know, to reduce uh, your testing effort. Great. Thank you for answering all those questions, Heiko. Um, so we're right up at an hour. Um, I just want to take a moment again and say thank you very much to everyone who has attended our webinar today. We really hope it was beneficial for you. Um, please feel free to contact us with any additional questions that weren't answered. Um, like we said earlier, we're definitely here to help. Um, the slides and the recording are going to be posted on our website as soon as possible. Um, and we will provide a link to all of the attendees from today. So thanks again, and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Thanks, everyone. Bye.